Be Ever Watchful Part 2, written by Brother Robert Watson Jr. and narrated by Brother Rich Nath. Today we're bringing you an article from the Book of Sermons, published by the Church of Jesus Christ. We're sharing Part 2 today, and look back to last Friday for Part 1. We can truly rejoice with James as he says, Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. But alas, there will be bitter anguish felt on the day of judgment, when God shall require this generation at our hands. We who have received the enlightenment of the gospel cannot escape the fiery indignation of God if we fail to carry this word of life. In the earlier days of civilization, the Lord winked at the ignorance of man. His allowance for sin was greater, but as he began to pour out his knowledge and wisdom upon his creation, he expected more in return. In the book of Exodus, he established rigid laws at the foot of Mount Sinai. Those were destined to be overshadowed by the doctrine of Christ. Jesus did not make any allowances for the presence of money in the temple when it was used as a means of business. Rather, he took the whip and drove them into the street. Neither did he allow for willful refusal to accept his miracles performed in the cities of his day. He stated, Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethesda! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. These verses show the position in which Jesus placed the cities in comparison to Sodom and Gomorrah. Why was their condemnation greater? Because they had beheld greater divine proofs. Yet they had not seen or heard of the greatest miracle, the resurrection of Christ. Oh, I fear for the position in which God has placed us, we of this so-called enlightened age. We know Jesus did resurrect and open wide the entrance to heaven. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. Two thousand more preparatory years have elapsed since he made this promise. The earth is reaching its maturity, when, as Peter says, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Jesus warned, in effect, that when ye see the fig tree begin to bud, you will know that summer is nigh. So, likewise, when ye see these things come to pass, you will know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. Can we deny that we are living in the last dispensation of time allotted unto man? Is it not alarming to see the retrogression of this present generation in comparison to the last? We've approached the time when the marriage vows are being desecrated every day. Juvenile delinquency is fast gaining momentum. At this moment, while I am speaking to you, political machinery is working that will be used to destroy lives again. Is it any wonder I caution you to watch? There is only one way to escape from this destruction, and it is through Christ. The second part of the topic verse, stand fast in the faith, is a result of careful watching. James says, For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Will we be able to say with Paul that we have fought a good fight, have finished our courses, and have kept the faith? Only when we have convinced ourselves can we hope to convince others. The way to stand fast is as the verse goes on to say, quit you like men, which means we must reach maturity in the sight of God. Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. The time comes in our lives when we are set free from the guidance of our parents. We venture into this world to forge our own destiny. As children, we live in a world of make-believe, as men in a world of reality. We admire the manly heart which inspired Peter to say to the Sanhedrin council, we ought to obey God rather than men. One of the most important things to a man besides the appearance of men is the strength of men. This observation brings us to the last instruction of our subject verse, be strong. Paul says, when I am weak, then am I strong. God helps us to be strong. The strength of Samson lay in the covenant he held with God. When he broke that covenant, his strength was taken from him and he was captured by the Philistines. Likewise, our strength depends on the covenant we make with God. We must be ever watching, standing fast, quitting like men, and God will grant us the strength to endure until the end.